Hey, how are you? Well, this isn't really a uh, vlog, but it's a great educational video. We're going to talk about hypnosis a little bit, and by now, if you look at all the uh, videos I made, like going 50 back, I say, if you have not ever been hypnotized, please listen to this, and it's like a 35-minute recording. And I am very serious about that. Um, if you have never been hypnotized or if you want to learn more about it, you must listen to that. Uh, and I'm also, and I might ma even make a separate video on this, we're going to talk about those who should not uh, ever go into hypnosis unless explicitly there's a note from your doctor. I mean, these are just common sense no-nos on who not to put into hypnosis. Um, this guy here, Adam Eason, he's a friend of mine. This is his website, but I'm going to go to another website too. So you don't think, you, you know, he might uh, be against certain types of people. It's not that at all. But I will tell you, now this doesn't completely, uh, it doesn't completely match me as I'm not a complete beginner. Um, because I think he's talking to a lot of beginners. Uh, but yes, uh, so this is what he tells students. Uh, and again, students, these are those who are just getting into it. Um, and, and I do have problems with pop-ups and all kinds of crap on my computer. I need it fixed. I need uh, my friend Steed with the long year to come over. It says, at this stage, avoid anyone who you don't feel comfortable working with. That's true with any profession. Avoid anyone who may abreact, and I've talked about abreactions. Maybe you sense their emotions are close to the surface. Do not work. Hang on, damn it. All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, do not work with anyone with severe psychological disorders. For now, he says. And when we say that, we're talking about the major uh, psychological disorders like um, schizophrenia, schizoaffective, uh, some bipolar, people who are actively delusional, who might think the CIA, the mob, or whatever is after him, those who are actively hallucinating, they're hearing voices, seeing things, never work with those people. Those who are actively abusing drugs, and that includes alcohol and marijuana. Okay. Hypnosis and hypnotherapy traditionally deals with neurotic disorder and neurosis, which is more of the mild psychiatric disorders. Uh... And never, it says, people with pathological personality disorders are considered to be contraindicated for hypnotherapy and those with drug or alcohol psychosis, those who are just way too burnt out because of years and years of alcohol or drug use, people with dementia or senility, as well as people with suicidal tendencies, 
all of which in the first place need to be referred to their doctor or ideally a psychiatrist. So if there is anyone who's, uh, who has severe psychiatric disorders, those who are actively under the influence, yes, marijuana counts, of alcohol or drugs, um, though, like stage hypnotists, they, they, they will work with someone who's had a drink or two as it kind of helps them with their, that's usually like in clubs and stuff. That's kind of a different scenario. We're talking clinical. But even the stage hypnotists, they have to be very careful. Um, yeah, any, any type of personality disorders, like borderline personality disorder, uh, narcissistic, antisocial, uh, avoidant personality, the access to, uh, unless you're well trained, uh, don't work with those. I have bipolar disorder and I saw someone, but I've never been in a psychotic state though, as I had type two, the less severe. But yeah, anyone who's having hallucinations and they're high on alcohol, drugs, whatever, uh, they're suicidal, don't work with them. Um, and let's see, change to a different, uh, okay, uh, okay, we'll go here. So, so do you get, like, who should not be listening? Physically, those with uh, heart problems, those with epilepsy or narcolepsy or even high blood pressure should not use uh, hypnosis um, because you relax. Maker. If you remember the guy at the wall. Yeah, they feel precautions. Not really watching him and everything. Because what can happen is, is you can relax too much and your heart will go down. Same thing with blood pressure. When you're so relaxed, your blood pressure might go down too far. Um, and so on. Uh, so yeah, those with heart problems, epilepsy, uh, that's why blinking lights and mechanical hypnotic aids, uh, you know, they say don't use. You know, look at the blinking light. I mean, that can really cause a seizure. Um, here, we, we could talk about elements of hypnosis. The first, obviously, is suggestion. Um, the second element is focus of attention. You know, that they, they, they must uh, be focused on your attention. Um, the third element is relaxation. Uh, the fourth is imagery. It says, imagery is the fourth key to the hypnotic induction. To help you relax, hypnotists will have you imagine that you're heading down, down, down a flight of stairs, an escalator, perhaps an elevator. Down, not up, though some do go up. Um, 
you'll be given a countdown as you get closer and closer to the bottom. And by the time you've reached the very bottom, often at the count of 10, um, you'll feel that you're asleep uh, before the show or session ends, the hypnotist will take you back in reverse order, out of trance, up and up. Um, and listen to this. It's when you think that you're asleep that the mystery begins. If you were truly asleep, then how could you possibly obey the hypnotist instructions? Because you are incapable of moving while you are actually asleep unless you have a sleepwalking disorder. You wouldn't hear what the hypnotist has to say. All right. Now, I want you to see this. And while going to sleep is is not good. I'm going to highlight this. talking about hypnotic from regular sleep. If you're receiving hypnotherapy and you're fast asleep, you won't be able to incorporate the hypnotist suggestions into your waking behavior. Going to a hypnotist to get an hour's worth of sleep with no behavior change is not something that most people are willing to pay for. <laughs> uh, so, so you see, see what I mean. Uh, you know, it's not me be, being an ass or anything when I say don't fall asleep. Uh, unless it's specifically for sleep, and I have about 13 of those videos. But anytime you listen to something for behavioral change or something, um, it, it's best to stay awake. Hypnotic sleep is good. Hypnotic sleep is like being in a daydream, being in the subconscious part of your mind. Uh which happens during the hypnotic induction. Uh, also, things that can cause people to fall asleep, overly long hypnotic inductions can cause people to, to fall asleep. So it's not always on the people, it could be the hypnotist. But where I am here, not seeing you, not knowing the type of person you are, I can't really judge the, the type of induction that would be good for you uh, unless you wanted a session uh, via Skype, hint, hint. <laughs> um, and we talked and whatever. Um, the hypnotic induction that most hypnotists use, and it's kind of sad uh, because it's one that does make people fall asleep the most, is the long body part by body part relaxation. Uh, the Dave Elman, if you do it good enough and you've practiced it, people should not be falling asleep because that's an actively involved induction where they have to open and shut their eyes, uh, where they count backwards actively, and so on. But you get that deep somnambulism. So that's why I, I love using the Dave Elman induction. It's less likely people are going to conk out on me. 
so yeah, that those are some hypnotic learnings for you if uh if that makes any sense. Uh yeah. So I hope everyone's doing good and I want to thank all of you for uh your donations. It's, that's too kind. I I love it. Um and if you want to donate uh to my PayPal, my email, which is my regular email, as well as Eddini, E D D I N I underscore eight one nine seven six at Yahoo dot com. Yahoo <laughs> All right, God bless.